Oh. Struggle with topping. It's such a painful shot. All that energy for the ball to go nowhere. Let's share with you some of the top tips that I use with students, that fix students, that get them controlling how many tops they hit. And then if they hit one, gives them weapons to how not to hit another one while playing. Do you struggle from topping golf shots in that box? Let me know, yes or no. If these tips help you, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. I've got daily golf uploads on all things tips, reviews and everything else. And if you're already subscribed, give that bell icon a little ring. Make sure you don't miss the next great video. Let's get you not topping any more golf shots. I've got Coach Lockie on cam. Hi, Hello. Coach. And we've got Hello. Dan in the house as well. Hi, good Dan. Good morning. Hello. How good are you guys at hitting tops on purpose? Pretty good. Yeah, I would say I could do it. Yeah, so here you go then. I used to teach a lot of new golfers, and you see a lot of tops. So I went on a little mission of trying to hit the best top. I wanted to work out, like, I want to know how they're doing this so easily. I want to understand what's making them pull a top out every now and then, okay? So when you hit your top, there's two ways of topping. What are the two ways of topping? Impact only. Um, having the um, club too high. Okay, Basically. so club too high, but it can be too high in two ascents. Yeah, so hitting after the ball and before it coming up. Yeah, so which one's the most common? Um, before coming up, I would say. Would you? Okay, yeah. and then for you, do you I understand what say, he's saying? Yeah, 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 so yeah, Matt's yeah. saying say that you get... You, I would say it's the other way. Okay, if you were going to top it on purpose, yeah. are you doing the upward? So Matt is saying, I totally agree, these are the two tops that you see. Bottom out early, hit up. Yeah or bottom out really late, hitting on the way down. If you're gonna hit a top on purpose, which one do you do? The, which one do you do? I do the other way, I go that way. Yeah, which one do you do? I do that one too. Me too, because the <laughs> one that is most common that they do is really hard, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Like, so to try, I have to put the ball up there. To like, yeah. and it's a fin more than a yeah, top. Because that's, that's a question that I ask at the start of lessons. Like, do you fat and thin? Yes. Like, if you fat and thin, then you're bottom the early. Bottom, aren't bottom you? early. Bottom yeah. Early. Where yeah. If I'm going to hit purposeful tops, I'm doing that. Oh one. Yeah. yeah. And that's the game. Did you not play that game as a kid? Yeah. Yeah. So that you can game pop it. It's the Pop's best game. I want you to whack this into high speed for me, Matt. Come on. <laughs> okay. Let's treat them. And this is the problem. I used to see students, like you said, do you fat and thin? Mm -hmm. how, how are you topping? No idea if they're going that way too much and it's before, or, or low points after the ball, or they're low points before, okay? So let's give some top drills and tips on how to stop topping. And you can apply these with you. So at the start of the video, I was doing it with a driver. Same thing, if I was gonna to top with a driver, I would go on the way down and do it on purpose. Um, and the same with the iron. But all these tips would work with both of these clubs in theory. Top tip then, Matt, what are you getting for me? Tip. So I get my students to, I get like three, four balls, let's go three, and I get them to tee them up at different heights, one off the floor. So they got one on the floor. One teed up nice and high, one teed a bit lower, and all the heights are completely different. And I try and get them to strike each one and work it all out. Any particular club? Any club, yeah, I, whatever club they're using on, in the lesson, basically. So you would do this with a driver, but you yeah, wouldn't have yeah. the one on the ground, I take yeah, it? To, or, yeah, yeah. And so change the heights, but yeah, driver, tee it up, and tee it up different heights again. And then if it's irons, in theory, they on should the be able good. to take on any of those tee heights, shouldn't just they? Just try and strike them. And I try and ask them the questions of, like, you've struck that one off that high tee what different feelings have you got have you got different tilts have you got different bends to try and get that low point in a certain spot and they're like sometimes yeah i just stand a bit taller oh, well there you go so you've stood a bit taller there it's like different lies yeah you stand in different ways you still need to deliver that club onto that ball find out what works for you and i love that tip i've used that and i i've used it more um i would go outside and i can on grass mm -hmm. Because I say to him, like, we're in a mat indoors often. People have their lessons in these artificial places. And there's a purpose for that and a use. But I say, like, right, if you're topping it here, I could go out and find seven situations <laughs> now where you're going to top nearly everything. Yeah. So we go, right, ball below your feet. You know, it's striking the ball, bottoming the club out 
to impact ground and ball in a way that gives you a good strike it's dynamic it's going to change literally if you measured it i reckon in 18 holes you probably would get four what? shots yeah. that are identical in how high you are to the ball to the ground so you are dynamically having to adjust so practicing not dynamic changes like that mm -hmm. we're well, not practicing golf are you no like that one man I used to do this loads of students. Success rate with this was massive and you used to get the look. You know the look in lessons? Oh my goodness, look. Yeah, so basically that you get you get the conversation. <laughs> I've suffered from tops for years. I've seen so many. I've had so many lessons. No one fixed me. I love that one. I just yeah. think right, here we go. Winner. Come on, I can I want my go. <laughs> and they hit this shot from a drill. I'm just about to explain to you. So they and they like get this strike and they look at you like uh, what, uh, what have, uh, you, what have done? you done to me? <laughs> so, if you're bottoming out that club early, so think about it, club starts on the ground. It's going to go up in the air above my head. I'm then going to move it back down to the ground. At some point, it's going to reach a low point, which I want it to be somewhere near that ball, preferably, say, an inch in front of that ball. And then after that, it's going to go back up in the air. So your window of opportunity is small. This is why golf is beautiful. In most golf shots, your window of opportunity to get that shot that you desire out is tiny. Now, if your window of opportunity is here, so your club bottoms out here, you're wasting all that opportunity and then getting the ball late, we need to shift that window from there to hopefully here. And the way I force that into people, look at that ball position. So that ball, this is an eight iron, and I can do it with six, three woods, like you can push it, but a bit of loft helps you at the start. That is outside my left toe. But you can't start up there. I'm gonna start in my normal golf position. So the club head in the middle of my stance, which is pretty much where I'd have an eight iron. And the game now is, can I hit that shot with any strike? in any direction and look at me i'm almost falling forwards to reach for that ball i am it's like cardiac arrest stuff i'm getting the paddles out and shocking them <laughs> yeah. like stop hitting it back there yeah move that uh, low point early, uh, <laughs> further on so having that ball there trying to hit successful shots forces them to do the things they need to shift weights across feel like their arms are pushing out in front of them move everything forwards yes they hit a few funny strikes at the start as they adjust but when they get a few strikes the key question is what did that feel like what did you do there mm -hmm. how did you do that and they would say things like oh i felt like i really shifted my weight across or i felt like i threw my arms much further out in front of me than i ever have and then i'm like well let's hold on to those feelings put the ball back in a reasonable position where you have it middle to slightly forward whatever you play it from and hit that shot with those same feelings common coaching phrase hit through it you must hit through the ball more that forces you to do that kind of cliche term it makes you focus on moving your hit forward of where the actual ball is rather than if you're defaulting to hitting the ball but your hit is early you need those paddles you need that what you got for me Dan I've got one hit me so the one I see a lot with um, a lot of golfers that come into the studio at Torquay is when they come in, they, they get a bit chicken wingy. So we're trying it, we're kind of going this position. So the club, the low point is kind of almost coming up. So yep. sort of hitting up as they come through the shot. And it's because of a lot of the time, it's because their arms are kind of pulling this way as we come through. You can see my elbow sort of breaking as we come through. So it's identifying why they're doing that. Now, majority of the time, it's gonna be a lot of the time with this loft that we've got on the club here. So they've got too much loft coming into kind of impact here. Okay. So if you think about if, if, I've, if I've created this sort of twisting of the face here on the way back in the swing, and then as I come down, I don't sort of try and change that or bring that back to a, a more neutral position. So as we get into this position, obviously the club face is wide open here now from this position here. So and it's pointing north, right so of where they want it to go and they've added loads right. of loft, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, lots and lots of loft. Club face pointing out to the right hand side. So they try and then compensate for that by then trying almost leaning the handle back a bit to just try and square this face up. And then obviously they're pulling up to the left as you come through here, which is obviously maintaining lots and lots of loft. And a lot of the time it's almost like topping over the top of the ball as they come through. Yeah, so they're literally struggling to get the club low enough because they're reacting to what they've done with the loft Correct, in the face yeah. is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. So what's always interesting, I think, is often the chicken wing idea yeah. 
is people are trying to fix that as a standalone thing where I totally agree what you're saying there is actually it's a product of everything that's gone before almost yeah. isn't it yeah. because if you try and if you think about it if I then try and get the feeling of almost getting these arms straight as I come through the shot here so stretching down to the golf ball holding that position getting the low point correct I'm just going to end up hitting if I don't change if I don't get this face in a more neutral position again I'm literally just going to keep hitting it out to the right hand side fix it by let's let's turn this face right in so look what what we talking there 10 20 degrees in as we set up there but make sure you turn it and then take your normal grip from there so what i don't want to see is people taking their grip and then trying to twist their hands in this position to try and change the face because they're not going to change anything so they're gripping a face that's left rather than Correct. gripping a face so, square and turning it left is that what you yeah, mean yeah so turn it left at, turn it left at the beginning grip and it left. then grip it grip it from that position if you set that down by the ball show me what that looks like it's right so why would we want them to start with a face that's now pointing like 20 degrees left what, that, because, what's that going to do because i want them to try and manage that in what way? In what way? We're going to try and feel like we can then push the arms forward into a more sort of straighter position through the shot. So we're trying to almost like feel like we're almost opening the face up from there as we come through. To achieve that, the idea, the game of this is not, they're not allowed to hit it left. So what? they've got to be able to manage that face and keep it as square as they possibly can to hit straighter shots. Show me. Yeah, I mean, look at that. You've got almost high right with yeah. that. So I've really felt like I've extended through into that position, making sure I don't allow that club to sort of flip over to the left. I'm trying to almost hold it off big time as I come through in there. You know, you're not going to end up trying to do this all the time when you move on to the golf course. At some stage, you're going to have to then start to manage the club face a little bit more, or probably in the backswing as you start to take that club away. So over time, I just really want to get you to get the feeling of, of what it feels like to extend the arms down through the shot in this closed club face position. Yeah. But over time, you will have to start bringing that club face a little bit squarer at address and then start to change wrist angles more in the backswing, uh, which we've done lots of videos on that anyway. But it, you know, start to change these positions, which then allow the club to come into a more neutral position. So basically, that. managing loft and but, like I, I use I use that drill as well. Yeah, I love the fact that that drill is getting people's emphasis away from what they are looking at on camera. That's actually it, it's it's the product of, isn't it? Yeah. Because I've seen so many students, Adam, through the years, coming in trying to fix my chicken wing, and I say to them, "Well, what, why do you, what, why do you need to make that move? Because I don't need to make that move. I can show you lots of golfers who don't. I can show you some that do." Um, uh, Jordan Spieth, great example of someone who does use the move, weak grip. but he manages loft in a different way because he's got a weak grip and you'll look at his wrist and angles are really flat compared <laughs> to someone else who starts with a stronger grip. So he's, he's just balancing up the different start position into an impact where it requires him to have a little bit of what they call a chicken wing. Uh, Lee Westwood, he can't straighten his left arm so he has the chicken wing so his whole swing is built around it. Yeah. My question to the student is why do you feel the need to do that chicken wing? You know, what is causing that? And then in turn not bottom the club out and playing with loft for them like you've done there. Just like it, it, it jolts them again, isn't it? Transforms toppers, them, yeah. isn't it? They need jolts, don't they, toppers, yeah. I think? Yeah. Because they're not a they're not getting shock. it right. Not, it's true though, isn't it? <laughs> At the time, they're happy to just carry on and then just moan about it. Well, well it's true, but what <laughs> happens is if I hit some good ones and the odd top, like I don't know many golfers who are going out there and hitting 18 top tee shots. Like that's very, I know golfers who are hitting 12 good tee shots, two average ones and four tops. They want to know, like, so they're hanging on thinking, I must be getting it right some of the times, those four will go. No, it, the whole system is breaking down. We need to jolt it to get rid of all of them. Really. Mm. Good tips, guys. I like that. Don't top it. Topping on purpose is also oh, oh. a skill. A skill that is worth practicing in Absolutely. a funny way. Give those tips a go. Let me know how they get on. Let me know if they make sense. Let me know if they help you. Trying to control low point is such a skill that you need. Because remember, like Matt's drill, again, love that one you're gonna have so many different low points in a round. So on the flat mat like here, you need to be able to master it. Comments down below, do you top or not? Does the, any of these tips help you? Let me know. If they didn't, let me know. Let me know you might, what you might want us to do more of, or even find some more brammers. Topping nuggets. tips, little nuggets. I've got loads. I've had a lot of toppers through my life. I've come up with a lot of little tricks. <laughs>